In this episode of Latitudes, we further continue our adventure of discovering Nepal. We check out a unique way of getting some great views and visit one of the world's great national parks. We also visit the tropics and sample an underwater world without even getting wet. From the tropics, it's on to Germany to see some very interesting castles and participate in one of the world's largest festivals. Lastly, in this episode of Discovery, we head for Fiji and sample a typical Sonasali resort holiday. Now here's a novel way of getting great views of the Pakara district. An aviation company at Pakara can organise ultralight aircraft hire for experienced and qualified pilots. Lessons for those with plenty of time on their hands can also be arranged with international certification accredited upon completion of the course. Tandem flights with experienced flyers at the controls are also available. Another aviation pastime that can be found in Nepal is hang gliding. Hang gliding is a relatively new sport in India. But with great mountains and hills to soar from, it was only a matter of time before this sport bloomed. The monsoons are the only months when this sport is not possible in India. Otherwise, even the winter months are ideal. If you're in search of adventure closer to the ground, then look no further than the nearest river. Nepal's topography is scored with dozens of mountain rivers, generating a variety of never-ending white water experiences, unparalleled anywhere else in the world. And in Nepal, there are plenty of opportunities to exercise the mind as well as the body. Medavi is the birthplace of the Buddha and has been a central pilgrimage for more than 2,000 years. To the east of Medavi, hidden along Nepal's southern border, lies Chipwan National Park, with an array of wildlife and scenery to rival the best African safari. Chipwan offers a truly unique wildlife experience. While only a lucky few will catch sight of the rare Bengal tiger, a guaranteed feature is the elephant. Wild elephants roam the plains, while their domesticated cousins let tourists get up close and personal with these majestic animals. This park contains many of India's natural wild animals and may be a key in assisting the future of the Bengal tiger, which is perhaps the most endangered big cat. Another endangered species is the most impressive animal in this region, the one-horned Asian rhinoceros. It's on the world's endangered species list, but it's now enjoying protection in one of the world's best managed national parks. Tour guides can take the visitor on a great adventure that includes trekking and canoeing to get to some of the more remote regions of this huge natural park.
Another great park to visit is the Koshi Tapu Wildlife Reserve. Bird watchers also find much to love about Nepal, which is home to more than 850 bird species. Many can be found at the Koshi Tapu Wildlife Reserve in the southeast of the country. A stay on the banks of the Koshi River also gives the visitor insight to the colourful lives of the local people. Their lives revolve around travelling by boat and they continue traditions that are centuries old. The locals are friendly people and welcome the visitors. Nepal is a trekker's paradise and there seems a never-ending amount of country to travel. Stingray City at Grand Cayman Island is one of the most popular shore excursions in the Caribbean. In the late 1980s, divers started feeding squid to the stingrays, which is one of their favourite dishes. Before long, dozens of rays would show up each day to be fed. Many Caribbean guidebooks call the snorkelling at Stingray City the best snorkelling experience in the world. You don't have to have any snorkelling experience to take this shore excursion. The water is shallow, so you don't have to be a good swimmer. Another of Cayman's great attractions is the submarine experience. Your one and a half hour excursion conveniently begins and ends at the Atlantis dock. Experience the thrill of journeying beneath the sea in a real submarine. A technological marvel, the Atlantis submarine was specifically designed for underwater sightseeing excursions. The spacious cabin is air-conditioned for your added comfort and maintained at sea level pressure, which means there's no effect on your ears. The smooth ride and clarity of the water will amaze you as you explore Grand Cayman's underwater marine park to a depth of 100 feet. At the helm of the Atlantis is a highly skilled pilot who will reveal to you a panorama of breathtaking underwater vistas, while your friendly co-pilot and the guide provides a wealth of knowledge in an entertaining narration. Cayman Turtle Farm is home to over 16,000 green sea turtles, ranging in size from 6 ounces to 600 pounds each. The farm is one of the most successful restocking programs in the world. As Grand Cayman's largest land-based attraction, the Turtle Farm has more than 340,000 visitors every year. Visitors may leisurely walk around the tanks observing the green sea turtles, from the tiniest hatchlings to the massive adults swimming in the breeding pond. A selected group of young turtles is set aside to be held for a unique photo opportunity. Tours of the farm are self-guided and take approximately 20 to 30 minutes to complete. It's also possible to witness the release of turtles into the wild. <laughs> Munich is filled with the most endearing traditions. How could one speak of Munich but to see it as a kind of German heaven? So remarked author Thomas Wolfe when visiting Germany's secret capital. King Ludwig I vowed to make Munich a new Athens, a centre of learning and culture. Over 45 museums call Munich home. The Deutsches Museum will certainly stimulate your mind and tire your feet. Every royal family had their separate seasonal residences. In Munich, the summer home was the Baruch Neufenberg Palace.
German cuisine, as diverse as the people themselves. Don't miss savouring the palatable pleasures of grilled Wurst, baked breads and delectable pastries. There is something for everyone, from the traditional to the exceptional. When you think of Bavaria, the image of a heavy stein of beer comes to mind. In this region, there are over 900 breweries. What better way to enjoy this liquid bread than in Munich's legendary Hofbräuhaus? The ultimate celebration of food and beer is at the world's largest festival, the Oktoberfest, which surprisingly begins in September. Dating back to 1810, the first festival was attended by 40,000 people. Today, the Oktoberfest entertains over 5 million people. As you travel through Germany, the landscape is an ever-changing canvas of unexpected textures and colours. South of Munich, as you approach the Alps, the terrain becomes more dramatic. In less than two hours, you arrive at Garmisch-Partenkirchen, a resort for all seasons in the Versestein Mountains. During December, you find Christmas markets all over Germany. Upper Bavaria is also home to the extraordinary castles of King Ludwig II. Linderhaf, his favourite, sparkles with the riches of royalty. The centrepiece and largest room is the King's bedchamber. The king is sometimes also known as the Mad King Ludwig for his huge, wild fantasies in stone. The Winchestein Castle in Fusen was Ludwig's attempt to turn German myths and legends into reality. Delicate wood carvings above his bed represent the various spires on German cathedrals. Scenes from the operas of Ludwig's idol Richard Wagner are painted directly onto linen walls. With the likeness of the king, of course, taking the part of the hero. But Ludwig did not die a hero's death, having spent most of the state's money building his castles and most of his time far away from the tedium of politics, he was declared incompetent and after 22 years as ruler, deposed. A few days later, the king was found drowned. Murder? Suicide? Accident? Nobody knows for sure. The winter solitude of the Bavarian Alps has nurtured
townsman Matthias Klotz, after studying with Antonio Stradivari, handed down his knowledge of violin making, an art that is as celebrated and as complicated as playing the instrument itself. If you're considering a holiday in the South Pacific, take a closer look at Sonasali Island Resort. Just half an hour by road from Fiji's International Airport and a three minute boat ride from the mainland. After receiving the warmest Fijian welcome, guests usually spend the remainder of the day poolside, adjusting to Fiji time. Guests usually end their first day relaxing, taking in the golden layers of yet another perfect Sonasali sunset. Originally, Sonasali Island was a copra plantation and is now being developed into a beautiful and exclusive resort. A unique blend of modern and traditional Fijian architecture is both grand and spacious, and the huge freeform pool is the perfect place to sip an ice cold drink and meet other guests. <laughs> Sonasali is nestled within palms of lush tropical vegetation of a 105-acre private island. The ultra-modern facilities and amenities are hidden behind a cascade of Fijian architecture and vibrant landscapes. The beachfront executive bourrées come with a choice of king or twin queen-size beds and feature their own private outdoor spa. Family bourrées feature two bedrooms and ample relaxation space and include an extensive private deck with uninterrupted ocean views. Beachfront hotel rooms feature the good taste and elegance, which is the hallmark of Sonasali. Of course, all accommodation includes air conditioning, telephones, refrigeration and stylish modern bathrooms. For that special dining experience, the new plantation dining restaurant is a must. Sonasali has a large range of superior cuisine, which include lovo or earth oven meals. The fabulous Sonasali buffet offers the best Indian, Asian, Pacific and international dishes. The Mongolian barbecue is also a great favourite. Guests can participate in many activities, sports or excursions organised by Sonasali's full-time activities coordinators. Traditional and cultural demonstrations performed on the island combine a blend of the sacred, the serious and just plain fun. The firewalking ceremony is not to be missed and guests are welcome to try for themselves, but only under close supervision. If you're doing nothing at Sonasali, it's probably because you want it that way. At Sonasali, you can relax and unwind, or you can go exploring. The pace is as fast or as slow as you want it to be. The bountiful marine life in close proximity to the island provides guests with a great opportunity for sports fishing. Your catch can include wahoo, marlin and barracuda. A variety of charter vessels are available for both half-day and full-day hire. 
Snorkeling trips to the outer reef are conducted daily. A full scuba facility is located at the resort's own marina and guests can enrol in a Discover Scuba program or complete a full certification. Sonasali's friendly staff are happy to plan and organise your very romantic and unique wedding. Many couples have been delighted in the affordability, professionalism and the locals' sincere enjoyment of this special occasion. Sonasali management and staff are dedicated to your total relaxation and service. For memories that will last a lifetime, why not choose Sonasali Island Resort as your next island holiday destination? Join Latitudes again when we next trek the globe and explore fabulous and exciting holiday destinations. For further information regarding any story on this episode, log on to www.pbtv.com.au. This program is proudly supported by PATA and Always Dive Australia.